Hello, we're back to part two of the backsliding Christians, prodigal sons, prodigal daughters, unbelievers. Um, yeah, so basically, um, I wanted to talk about, Father God wanted to talk about Jonah. And it is sort of about backsliding Christians because backsliding Christians, you know, they have ministries, they're brought up with Bible believing Christians, and they sort of disobey God and they go on their own journey. <laughs> in the through the world basically um but uh father god will always try in his power to bring them back you know because they are his sheep you know and the sheep will return to the shepherd um that's what everyone needs to understand because you all will come back so but it's up to god you know it's his will so um Basically, 11 miracles in Jonah. We usually have many miracles in our daily life, but we don't give God thanks for them. God spoke to Jonah twice. Okay. The Lord sent out a great wind on the sea. They cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah and the raging sea grew calm. But the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah alive. <laughs> Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights. Okay. And the Lord commanded the fish and it vomited Jonah into dry land. When the fish vomited Jonah, you can put it into real life because it gets to the point where you backsliding Christians, you'll come to a or non-believers, prodigal sons, daughters, you will come to a low point in your life and that will be the point where you do cry for God. You will ask God into your life. You will beg him to come and save you, you know. So that's exactly what happened to Jonah. But Father God, he's always here, you know. He's opening his arms for you guys just to uh, repent and, you know, humble yourself, you know. Um, because God is above you. He's above us. Um, but there are times where you do have backsliding Christians. David Wilkerson was talking about it, um, Pastor David Wilkerson. Um, who died recently, but we will see him in heaven. That's amazing. <laughs> um, he says that there was a pastor that he knew that it was far, far gone, you know. And But they choose to do that. And they say, oh, you know, Jesus wouldn't forgive me. Come, you know our Holy Lord Jesus Christ would forgive you. It's just that they become uh, 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 um, comfortable in that life. And so they don't want to get out of it, basically, because they know that Jesus Christ would forgive them. That's why Jonah... He was said to Father, he said, God, you know, help me. And with that, Father God came and helped him and took him out of the whale. You know, but you guys need to humble yourself. You know, um, God provided a warm, a worm. God provided a scorchy east wind. So here are some lessons from the book of Jonah. And I'm reading from the King Jesus Bible. This is an extract. If you want a copy or you have any questions about the King Jesus Bible, please email Brother Dr. Banda. Um, and the, their email is kingjesusbible at aol.com. Um, so basically, yeah, so some lessons from the book of Jonah. God loves all of the people in the whole world and wants everyone to be saved. When we know that God wants us to do something, it is important that we do what he wants us to do, okay? Right, so basically, you backsliding Christians, you are meant to do God's work, okay? So God is not gonna let you go that quickly. Disobedience against the will of God can bring us into a place of great misery and fear, okay? That's why you guys are scared of dying, okay? fear of dying because you know that God is God is on your conscience God is talking to you come to his light you know stop being so puffed up humble yourself you know um, fast and penance are important in our lives okay if we wish for God to forgive us our sins we should be happy when God forgives the sins of other people so that is why Jonah got puffed up because he was like well he's a prophet so he knew that father god was going to forgive the people and he thought well what am i doing you know they should this should happen to them this should happen to them. so he was basically trying to be god you know so that's why he ran away but god taught him a lesson as well to say that yahweh is yahweh you understand 
And you have to forgive other people, you know, otherwise, again, we're going back to forgive, forgiveness, you know, forgive, because <laughs> our Father God will not forgive you, you know, and you know that if you've done wrong, you know that Father God will forgive you if you repent from your sins. So stop making that as an excuse, backsliding Christians. So we should love all the people in the world and teach them about the love and forgiveness of God. Exactly. So Father Yahweh, uh, you cannot get to Father Yahweh without Jesus Christ. Our Holy Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for all of us, for all of our sinners, for, for your sins. Okay, he paid the price for our sins. So what you need to do, backsliding Christians, prodigal sons, prodigal daughters, you know, repent from your sins. Repent, humble yourself, you know, because you are all meant to do something for God. You're meant to, you know, uh, uh, finish what he wants you to do. Stop running away, you know. Okay, so King Jesus and his church in the book of Jonah, okay, in the belly of a fish for three days. So basically he was in the belly for three days. Jonah is the prophet who lived in the belly of a fish for three days. A type of Lord Jesus. In the tomb for three days, okay? So it's the same, three days. Before resurrection, quoted by King Jesus himself in Matthew chapter 12, verse 20. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Okay? Um... So now we're talking about the actual fish. Okay. Um, Jonah's fish whale sea dinosaur, Dagkatos. This was a real giant fish or sea monster whale or whale. That was appointed by God. God had after all made all things, including dinosaurs, on day four and day five, Genesis chapter one. So what's the problem, okay? So basically, God created everything, okay? And there's a time in 1978, 17, sorry, 1758, a sailor fell overboard in the Mediterranean Sea. A shark swallowed him alive. The captain of the ship managed to kill the shark and out came the man, alive and well. <laughs> and he later went all over Europe with a 20 foot long shark following, uh, showing him his miracle. Okay, another account, real accounts, okay, of men being eaten by these creatures. In February 1891, James Bartley, a sailor on the whaler Star of the East, was found unconscious but alive in the belly of a blue whale, a big bull cachalot off the Falkland Islands. The whale's stomach acids had bleached his skin to a deadly whiteness that stayed with him for the rest of his life. For 14 days, James Bartley was a grippering manic, after which he became normal again. See details in Expose, Expository Times, August. Okay. Um, in 1906, this Bartley experience was investigated and confirmed by Sir Francis Fox, a committee of French science, scientists, including M. D. Parvel, the scientific editor of Journal des Debats of Paris, France. Okay, so there's lots of, um, you know, uh, bibliographies here and, you know, footnotes and stuff to actually back this up. Was Jonah swallowed by a whale or a fish? Some people claim that there is a contradiction in the Bible because the Old Testament calls the creature that swallowed Jonah a great fish, while the New Testament calls it a whale. This is not a contradiction. Matthew chapter 12 verse 40 says that the creature is a whale, but the original calls it a sea monster. The alleged contradiction is nothing more than a different word chosen for the English trans trans translation. So which is it? A whale or a fish? Nothing in the biblical account demands that the creature be a whale. It could be an extinct marine reptile or any one of the thousands of spe species of marine life that has gone extinct in the last few thousands of years. It may have been a fish, okay, so we don't know. That's Father Yahweh, okay. How about this guy, meet Dunculatius fish. Wow. <laughs> See, Father Yahweh, he's lighting the room because Father Yahweh's here. 
you know, the lights here. Um, okay. So Jonah, 2 Kings, chapter 14 to 25, lived in Gaith Hepa. Um, he lived in Galilee, Israel. Okay. So, so now the word of Yahweh came unto Jonah, son of Amittai. Yahweh's temple saying, Arise, go forth to Nivi, that great city, and cry against it, for the wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarhashish, rocky Spain, and went down to Joppa, now Jaffa. Okay? So he disobeyed God, basically, you know. Um, but Yahweh sent out a great, so while he's going to Spain, going, you know, not supposed to go there. Father God sent out a great wind unto the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was thought to be broken. Then five marines were afraid, and cried in prayer every man unto his God, and cast forth the Kelly implements that were in the ship of the sea to lighten them. So because of Jonah disobeying God, these men are in this big storm that Father God is sending. So Father God will send a storm to bring back his people to him, you understand? My Jonah was gone down into the cabins of the ship as he lay and was fast asleep. Okay? You think that he wasn't, he didn't know? Father God put him in a deep sleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What mayest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy true God, Elohim. Okay, that's Father God's name, Elohim, the Hebrew name. If so, that be true God will think upon us that we perish not. So he's saying to him, call upon your God. Call upon Yahweh, Yeshua. Okay. Um, so tell us, we pray thee, for what cause this evil is upon us? Okay. So then he said to them, I am a Hebrew and I fear Yahweh, the God of heaven, who had made the sea and dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why have you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of Yahweh, because he had told them. Then they said unto him, We shall what we shall do unto thee that the sea may be calm unto us, okay? And we, um, and the, the, the sea was tempestuous. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that my, for my sake this great tempest is upon you. So basically, what, what, how you can look at it is into a worldly perspective, in a modern day perspective, is the people, the Jonas of the world, they affect everybody. So this the Jonah was on the ship, and because of his disobedience to God, okay, others, other men on the ship, they're going to be affected too. So basically.